All right. So, so the next step would be the transformation. How do we do the transformation? Okay, transformation. So transforming from A state to B state, correct? So I have a problem. Now I want to transform the problem into a design. So that basically leads towards creating a data model. Okay, so this leads towards the next step is the data model. So when you say data model, so this involves logical, conceptual, okay, conceptual, logical, and then the physical. We say conceptual, logical, and then physical. So physical data model. So this is the starting point for us to understand what data we wanted. Okay. So here we are talking about data needed for any of those problems that what we are touching. Okay. So what kind of data I need? Okay. So what kind of data I need? So in this case, I need a GL account. Okay. In this case, I need a GL account. So I need to understand what kind of GL account I need. Okay. So or it could be any other data element you could think of. Which legal entity that is participating in this transaction or in this process? Then, the legal entity could be cost center, could be company code, business unit, or a profit center, whatever it is. Okay. All right. The next one is like, what kind of KPI I'm looking for? What kind of KPI I'm looking for? So these are the next steps. That's the next level of transformation. So from here, we move on to the next level at least. So this is basically the data model. Okay. So you will learn actual business problem. You will understand the design principle. You will understand the data model part of it. Okay. So outcome of this exercise will lead towards creating the actual physical infrastructure. Okay. So this leads towards the physical infrastructure. In our case, we are using SAP BW 7.3. Okay. 7.3. So what you learn, you learn about here actually. Okay. The <coughs> sorry, SAP BW extended SAP schema. Okay. Extended Task schema. So how the tables are grouped together, how the tables are managed and arranged and organized. Right? Balaji so those, has left those, the conference. So those type of information you will learn here actually. Right? So those type of information you learn here. So point what I'm trying to make, when you learn this one, you'll understand the back end. Okay, so this is when you learn and understand the back end part of the SAP BW. Since we are going to use SAP BW as the most of our data target, the, the, where we are going to store the data, it's going to be BW. So from there, it's going to be anywhere else. And also, it's going to be in HANA. Right? So, so you will get to know that. The point what I'm trying to make, when you do this one, you'll also learn the backend. All right. So once I've done the data model, the next step would be, I'm going to move on to, how do we bring the data? Okay. How do we bring the data? So that is where data services comes into picture. Okay. So this is when data services comes into picture. You bring the data, whatever data that is required. Okay. So the data could be come from multiple sources, right? So here you will have source systems. Okay. Here you will have source systems. From where the data are going to come. So source systems. This could be SAP ECC. This could be file. Okay. This could be Microsoft SQL Server or any DB, right? Or it could be coming from like an you know, external Excel file. Okay. So we already got this. So from these data sources, we are going to bring data into the universe, data services. Okay. So the next step is in this case, so the data has services. joined the conference. So we are bringing the data from multiple sources into the actual infrastructure by using data services. Okay. So data services is the prime data provider through which we are going to get the data. All right. So once I have the data, what is the next step? Can I use the data as it is? If you want, you could use. If you don't want, what we can do, we can create a semantic data layer. That's when universe comes into picture. Okay. That's when universe comes into picture. All right. So when I have data in universe, what's the next step? It's up to me how I want to do it. Okay. It's based on the business problem. It's based on the business needs. There will be multiple tools we'll be using at this point. Okay. Once we reach this point, then the next step would be how do we present the data back to the user? So based on the user need, business requirement, there will be different options to choose. What option? Option number one, use the web tool. Okay. So at this point, we'll be using web, web intelligence to analyze the data. Why web? We will be learning that. Okay. Or if it is not a web, then you can use another alternate tool. It's going to be crystal report. Okay. If it is not a web, it's going to be a crystal report. It's going to be a crystal report. All right. If that is not the case, then what is going to happen? You can use dashboard designer. Okay. You can use the dashboard designer. So the next option would be dashboard designers. Okay. Dashboard designer. Okay. So if this is not the case, if I don't want to use the dashboard designer, you can use OLAP analysis. Correct. I just want to analyze the data. Okay. So you can use analysis tools like OLAP analyzer. Okay. 
analytic tools like so there is a whole analytic tool which is good also so there are several different options to choose okay so there are several different options to choose so, so what we need to understand so the course is structured in such a way it's going to walk you through anything and everything so in the whole game where hana comes into picture okay where hana comes into picture right? if you understood we have a problem from the problem we are moving into design from the design we are moving to data model from the data model we are moving into like you know data services from there we are going to universe from the universe point we are going back to different reporting tools correct right? so this is how we are going to approach this from all day in this whole thing where hana comes into picture how hana is going to fit in this let's understand that right so now understand hana is going to play a role all right so once we done this one correct so this includes the physical infrastructure where we store data these guys okay so these guys is going to connect directly to hana okay okay so when i say data model so i'm talking about this one okay universe is the a semantic data layer you will get to know okay universe is a semantic data layer you will get to know and just understand this when we get, go back each of those objects you will you will learn more about it i'm going to talk about each of those objects right i'm going to talk about data services i'm also going to talk about universes i'm also going to talk about db uh, so when you get to that point you will learn more about it as of now just take it granted what universe means okay we'll talk later so this is nothing but your sap bw okay this is nothing but your sap bw 7.3 okay so this is your sap bw 7.3 where we are going to store the actual data okay so this is going to be the data storage okay where we store the data all right and this is going to be the tool etl tool or data integration data quality data governance tools okay this is etl tool okay etl data tool okay etl data tool the next is going to be a semantic layer okay semantic layer so this is basically an abstract layer which sits on top of data it's a business friendly layer okay it's like a view look okay? it's like a view it's a semantic layer okay semantic data layer when it's a semantic data layer there is no physical data storage okay there is no physical data storage okay so this is a semantic data layer all right now what all these are all going to do so these are all going to basically sit on top of hana okay when it sits on top of it has ability to connect and communicate back and forth to the hana okay so this is our sap hana 1.0 infrastructure okay so this is basically sap 1.0 hana 1.0 infrastructure okay so this is the place where you he have okay the hana infrastructure is posted so it's basically one second so this is the hana infrastructure where we are hosting all the any hana related stuff okay so whether it's going to be an in memory studio bringing real time data or whatever that is it's going to be so as most of you already know this sits on top of directly okay bw runs on top of it okay uses hana as a db okay so this uses so what it does is uses sap hana as a db database okay sap hana as a db so that means any data right now you have okay it's going to be stored on top of hana okay so it used to be you could use oracle or you could use sql server or you could use any other like you know rdbms now it is not required you can directly use hana to store the data okay all right so when it comes to data services what data services can do data services can use hana as a source data store okay as a source and target data store okay target data store that means it can read and write data into hana okay that data store okay so when you wanted to bring data from hana into data services and then whatever we want to go you can use this one so basically what it is it uses hana as a source and target data store all right this one uses hana as a source data source okay uses source data source not the target source data source that means it can read data directly from hana so these are all connected to hana infrastructure okay as you already know this is in memory appliances okay this is in memory appliances it, there is no physical data storage it's all in memory okay so these are all in memory so that's what nathomi was trying to say okay so she is working with a company called taxi memory system who provide very high performance solid state storage device okay so high performance solid state storage device this is in memory okay this is in memory so these are all happens in the memory so this is an in memory data storage 
and this has the ability okay this can connect to any other external sources okay any other external sources for example if you want to bring data from ecc okay if you want to bring data from ecc let's say i have an ecc sap ecc so from here you can directly bring data real time okay whatever you do in ecc this can get to see here so this is a real time okay so this comes real time no question okay so this would be real time so real time you can bring data okay so that's why if you notice people talk about copa okay so i want to bring data into hana and then whatever way you want to take it further you can do so in this case i want to bring data ecc into hana real time i can do that if it is not an ecc it's a non sap system okay if it's a non sap system okay it's a non sap system if it's a non sap system so how do we bring the data into hana okay so how do we bring the data into hana so you could bring the data into hana by using business object data services okay so this is not going to be real time it's going to be near real time that is on a scheduled frequency okay near real time so this is going to be through data services you can use data services to bring the data so point what i'm trying to make data services it supports okay data services supports okay <coughs> bringing data not under real time you can bring in data not under real time so these are the different way you could bring data into hana so i hope you got an idea overall what you will be learning okay so you will understand the business problem you will also understand how do we transform the problem into a design and from the design how do we move on to the physical building blocks which is data services universe web crystal dashboard designer all of analyzer correct so these are all the whole thing okay so when people come and ask me okay i want to get certified hana okay keep in mind just getting certified in hana it's not going to solve the problem okay trust me this is what you need to know to build an end to end solution okay to build an end to end solution this is what you know okay example how do we build a real time cash flow or how do we build a smart data analytics okay how to build okay yeah real time cash flow real time cash flow real time cash flow analysis for okay analysis for a company okay company like walmart okay so why we are taking walmart as an example so for a company like walmart how do we build a real time can anyone tell okay can anyone tell without hana is it possible doing real time cash flow analysis okay is it possible i'm asking to the audience the people in the class would it be possible or have anyone done this one the past doing a real time cash flow for a company like walmart when they say real time cash flow at any given point in time what the cash in or the cash out for a company like walmart why it's a global company they operate operate across the world multiple currency multiple region multiple location correct okay. transactions are posted in several different currencies from several different locations so how do we for such company build a real time cash flow analysis so that's an example okay that's an example the next one is smart grid analytics okay smart grid okay smart grid analytics okay so how many people know what hana stands for can anyone tell what hana stands for you can post your uh, answers in the chat window okay through the chat window you can respond to me how many people know what hana okay. stands for okay how many people know has joined the conference HANA, okay what hana stands for can anyone tell how many people know what hana stands for can you please respond okay santosh stole okay it is high performance analytical appliances okay so it clearly says analytical appliances correct so it clearly says it's analytical appliances so right now the focus is going to be on analytics moving forward it's going to be transaction too okay ecc also going to run on top of hana right now if you notice we have only pw running on top of hana so down the line it's going to be ecc okay i don't know when that is going to be down the line so it could be within a two year within a one year whatever the time frame i have no idea but whenever that is it's going to happen so what's going to happen so you will have ecc running on top of hana sap ecc Runs on top of Hana, and you also have SAP BW. I don't know whether BW is going to survive for that long. If that happens, that's great. If it's not, we have to say bye. So on SAP BPC, all this application is going to run on top of Hana. Okay, all this application is going to run on top of Hana. So this is not the current state; it's the future state. But right now, the focus is only on just 
analytical appliances okay it's more around analytical appliances but moving forward things will change everything everything is going to run only on hana okay that's a huge impact the scope of this it's going to go away okay it might go away it may go away because uh, uh, business objects taken over most of this role okay most of this role is going to go away so this may not be even exit actually i don't want to type anything actually so that's my gut feeling okay that's my gut feeling okay all right uh One second. I'm just trying to uh, respond to anyone who's having difficulties. Uh, okay, Mahamad, you have to dial into the class. Okay, you need to dial into. He's actually from Belgium. You just dial into the class. Use the conference number that was sent out in the email. Okay, I am sorry. I just have to respond to him because he's from Belgium. Okay, so <clears throat> use the conference number and dial into the class. Okay, so all right. So he he acknowledges. Let's move on. So coming back to my uh, question here, actually, so what I was trying to ask you. So how many people think it is possible to build a real-time cash flow analysis for a company like Walmart or Smart Grid Analytics? Can right? Our COPA real-time COPA analysis, okay, real-time COPA analysis. So any complex analytics, okay, can I build without having things like hope for uh, HANA? Yes, you can do that. Okay, yes, you can do that. But it is not that easy to implement. Okay, it is not that easy to implement. All right. So now let's come to how this kind of solution is going to look in HANA. Okay. So how do we this kind of solution is going to build in HANA? Let's understand solution flow for real-time cash flow analysis. So now we need to connect all the dots, right? Now we need to connect all the dots. So what is our business problem? Okay, so the business problem in this case, like the driving factor for all of this one, actually, the business problem in this case is going to be real-time cash flow analysis. Keep in mind, the reason why it's complex to implement, there are things happen at multiple locations, multiple currencies, right? Okay? So it is not a one single location. All right, so real-time cash flow analysis, that's the prime driver for to get to this one. So this is a driving factor, okay? This is a driving factor to do anything on HANA. So this is what business want to do, okay? This, what is this? This is a driving factor which drives to build a HANA-based solution, okay? Which drives to build a HANA-based solution. All right. Now, what I need to do, I need to basically understand this one. So this is a driving business driver, okay? So what is this? It's a driver which drives the business, okay? Which drives the business. Got it. No problem. Now the next is what I need to do. How the solution is going to look like this? Okay, so if this this, if this is what drives to me to do. Then how is the solution going to look? So all we understood, like you know, data is going to come from multiple sources, right? We understood that, right? So if you look at here, these are all source system. These are data. Okay, this is the source system, SAP ECC for Latin America. So Walmart Latin America uses SAP ECC as a data source. Okay, all right. Then Oracle. Okay, it's going to be Oracle as a source system. So who is using Oracle? Middle East Asia. Okay, Middle East Asia, they are using Oracle. Okay, Middle East Asia, they are using Oracle. So the next one is, okay, what we need to understand, it could be a file system. It could be a file system or it could be an unstructured data. Okay, it could be an unstructured data. It could be an unstructured data. Okay, when you say unstructured data, it could be data like Twitter, data like Facebook. Okay, see, these are all unstructured data. So any of this could be called as a source system which Walmart needs to use. Okay, so Walmart is trying to use data from all the different sources. Okay, so these are the different sources which bring data together. So what I need to do, I need to take this to the next step. How do we bring this data? Okay, how do we bring this data? So you could bring the data as I told you. If it's a real time, you can use SAP directly. If it's a not a real time, then you can basically use the data services. So from here we bring the data into SAP HANA. Okay, whatever infrastructure we have, it comes to SAP HANA. All right. Then on top of that, what we do? Okay. So as I told you, how do we bring the data? There are two options. Okay. If you are coming from here, you directly use okay SAP internal tools. It could be a real-time replicator or it could be any other tool that SAP recommends. Correct. So this is basically real-time. So this data is going to come real-time. And if it's not in real time, then we'll be using data services. Real time by using SAP, okay, or type is 
replication service or SAP given any other tools, then so here we'll be using BobJ. Correct? Here we'll be using BobJ data services. So BobJ data services will bring data from all the system into actual HANA platform. So once the data is there, then the next step what most likely you'll do. So you can create a universe. Okay, you can create a universe. So this is universe on top of this. Once the universe is created, then on top of that, I can implement different solutions. Okay, what solution I can build? As we talked about, you could use Webby. Why Webby? We'll talk about it. Or it could be, okay, it could be Webby, or it could be a dashboard. Okay, any of those tools is going to come into it. So this is option one. So in this case, we are not involving BW. So we are not involving BW. So it could be Webby, or it could be Crystal. Okay, it could be Crystal, or it could be Dashboard designer. It could be dashboard designer. Okay, dashboard designer. Okay, it could be dashboard designer. Okay, it could be a dashboard designer. So any of these tools could be used. In this case, no BW. If you look at here, I'm not using BW at all. Okay, I'm not using BW. So here, I'm not taking advantage of the system which is already in place. Okay, so here, no BW, no SAP BW at all. All right. So this is option one. Or option two could be with BW. Okay, so with BW. So this is nothing but reducing your total cost of ownership. Take an advantage of, okay? Total cost of ownership. Okay, total cost of ownership. Total cost of ownership. So I want to take an advantage of things that already been placed. Okay, I want to take an advantage of so things that already been placed. So what I already have. Sure. Already, okay, I already I have. Join the conference. I already have BW system in place. So how do we take an advantage of the BW system? Okay, so in that case, what will have happen? So in between, okay, in between universe and this, you have SAP BW system. Okay, you can introduce SAP BW. So what is going to happen? You can combine these two, create a multi universe. Okay, you can create a multi source universe. Okay, multi source universe. So multi source universe. That means universe can read from. Okay, so multi source universe which is going to read data from both HANA as well as it. Okay. So it's going to read data from both HANA as well as the SAP BW. So understand this. Why it is multi-source? For universe, the prime data source could be this guy, SAP BW, and it also can read directly from B, uh, HANA too. So this is why it's a multi-source. So this function introduced only in 4.0. The prior release don't have that function. Okay. So this can directly read from HANA and also BW. If you notice, it's a multi-source. Sure. There are two. There are two left the conference. Okay, there are two sources involved in this one, correct? Right? So one is SAP BW as a source one, and then HANA as a source two. Combine these two, create a universe, and use them on top of it, okay? Use them on top of it. So there are several different combinations, but I want to make sure you understand, like, you know, how these are all going to work together, okay? So this is with BW. The reason I'm choosing BW, total cost of ownership. I want to take an advantage of things that are already there in place, okay? I want to take an advantage of things that is already in place. So if there are certain things already in place, let's take an advantage of that. Okay, let's see how we reuse them. Right? You spend like so much time build BW. So now I want to take an advantage of. So how do we take an advantage of? Connect these two. Okay, so this is your source one. Okay, this is your source one. This is your source one. So what is this? It's source number one. So this is a source one where we see that like now all the data has come here. This is source two. Okay, this is source two. So where we see like you know. <coughs> Data are coming from HANA too. When I combine these two, it becomes multi-source. And then use them on top of this one. So this is the multi-source universe. On top of this one, you can build either a Webby or a Crystal or a dashboard, anything. So how do we take the end user, which we haven't talked about, right? So how do we distribute or how do we publish the end user? SAP Bobby gives another tool called BA Launchpad. Okay, on top of this, use a tool called BA Launchpad. Okay, BA Launchpad. So that is basically like you know, get a tool where you can select like, you know, <coughs> sorry, where you can take this to the end user. Okay, so BA Launchpad is a tool where we can take this to end user. Right? So this is an end user tool. It's like a portal. Okay, it's like a portal. It's like a your Microsoft portal, Microsoft SharePoint portal. So it's a portal solution. So like Microsoft, okay, it's not a Microsoft portal, it's like a Microsoft portal solution. So you can take this to the next step, okay, you can take to the next step. So point is, how do we take this to the user? I can use the VA Launchpad, which is a portal solution, take to the end user. So this is basically what you mean if you scroll out and say, I know how to do HANA. Okay, so when you say someone, like in a sense, I know I'm working on HANA, 
the expectation you should know end to end everything having a certification i have a great respect for certification i like people who are getting certified i appreciate but it's not really going to help you solve these kind of issues okay to help you to understand what hana all about right so this is going to focus more around building a solution so now we were able to connect all these other stacks okay so this is what the course was you what you learned this is what you learned you okay? see this is what you learned see all right so <coughs> Now the next step is why there are so many tools out there. Let's understand each of those tools, right? So what we looked at, well, there are multiple different options we are talking about. Okay, it could be like, this approach, it could be this approach, it could be other approaches as well. Okay, we have to sit down and lay out everything. So now what each of those tools does? Okay, what each of these tools does? Okay, what each of the tools does? What each of the Bobje tools does? Okay, each of the Bobje tools does. Okay, so. Now let's understand what they want to see. Okay, we talked about data services. Okay, we talked about data services. What data services does? Okay, data services. So what data services does? So data services, as we discussed, means it's a data integration tool. Okay, so what it does? It's a data. It says the data services, right? So what services provides? Data integration. So when you say data integration, bring data from multiple sources and integrate them. We'll take a look at like this. All right. So one is data integration. Second is data quality. Okay, data quality. So this also does data quality. Okay. All right. Next is data governance. Okay, data governance. Data profiling. Okay, data profile. So like that, there are so many different functions that. Okay. So that is why it's called data services. It is not just a A tool. It does multiple different services. Okay. So these are all some of the examples. When you say data integration, what does that mean? Okay, what we are talking about, we are talking about the tool capability of data services. What exactly data services does? Correct. What exactly data services does? So data services does all these things. And so data integration, data quality, data governance, data profiling, etc. Okay. Has left so the conference. Are, these are the different functions it does. Okay, these are the different functions it does. Correct. So overall, if you notice, what exactly data services does? It does all these functions. Okay, it does all these functions, right? All right. So when we say data integration, bringing data from multiple sources. Example, if you see here, it could be Oracle, it could be file, it could be any unstructured data. Bringing them and integrating. Okay. So bring data. Okay, bring data from multiple sources. From multiple sources. Okay, multiple sources. Whatever sources you could think of, it brings data from everywhere. Okay, bring data from multiple sources. And then integrate them. You can then integrate them. So bring data from multiple sources and then integrate them. So into one single data. Data quality. Okay. So data quality basically like you know making sure you get the like for example I'm looking for employee first in last in the building industry. I'm getting all of those. Okay. Example. So is SSN coming for? Okay. The social security is coming for. Is last name is coming? Okay. Is last name is coming? First name is coming. Like that. So you can write several different. Quality control checks. Okay, first name is missing, last name is missing or not. Okay, missing or not. So all the things we do. Data governance. Who owns the data? Okay, who owns the data? Who owns the data? And how do we manage the data? How to manage the data? How to manage the data? So all those functions we can do. Data profile. Okay, looking for a specific profile in the data. Okay, looking for a specific profile in the data. One second. One second. One second. All right. So this is basically data profile. Okay. So point what I'm trying to say. So these are the different okay options available so just to get to know what it does. Okay. So the role of data services. If you have data from multiple sources, correct? If you have data from multiple sources, example, it could be SAP, it could be whatever, correct? So these are all different data sources. So how do we bring all the data? Okay. How do we bring all the data? So these are the different sources into Either uh, BW or HANA, wherever you wanted to bring, you could bring. So bringing data, okay, from multiple sources, okay. As I told you, it could be any source into this one single one. So it's basically getting integrated. So this is where you integrate data. Okay. So this is done via data services, via data services. Okay. Via data services, you can bring data into either SAP, BW, BPC, whatever you can do. So that's what data services does. Okay. It primarily focuses on bringing data from multiple sources and then pull them. Keep in mind, 
in the SAP BW, you can do quality, you can do governance, you can do profile. In data process, you can do all in one. Okay, you can do all in one. All right. So that's what the focus of data services. All right. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one is not data services. It's the universe. Okay. The next one is what universe. So now let's understand that universe comes into picture and what is that? Okay. Universe is nothing but like you know, an abstract layer. Okay. Universe is nothing but an abstract layer. Okay. What is universe that? Universe is nothing but an abstract layer. What does that mean actually? So it's basically a yeah, business transformation of technical destination. Okay. Business transformation of technical destination. That is a question one second actually. It's from form of uh, in data integration. Okay. So that's a question one second. Uh, this question is in data integration, is it the same type of data being integrated or different? Any type of data. I told you that. If you take unstructured data, okay, this could be your LinkedIn and Twitter, okay? So this could be LinkedIn and Twitter. So this is not like, you know, a structured data. It could be any type of data. The type doesn't matter, right? It could be any type of data. So if you take this guy, so this could be your LinkedIn. Okay, this could be your LinkedIn. Okay, this could be your LinkedIn. Or it could be Facebook, okay? This could be your Facebook. Or it could be Twitter, okay? Okay, this could be Twitter. So all this set of data, you could bring it into it. It's not really a specific data type. It could be any data, okay? You can bring any data. So one of the, I would say, most powerful ETL tool in the industry, the most powerful ETL tool in the industry is the data services. Okay, one of the most powerful tool in the industry is the data services. All right, so move on to the next one, universe. What universe does? Universe basically like, you know, a semantic data layer. For example, let's take in a table, okay? So let's take in a table, so, so this is an actual table. So this table, I have an employee table. So I have EID, I have email, okay? I have e-cell, okay? I have e-cell, I have e-commission, okay? I have e-data birth, and then I have e-department, okay? So what is this? These are all technical definition of a field, okay? So what is this? It is nothing but your employee table. Okay, it's nothing but your employee table. So you have Just a join the conference. Employee. Okay, you have a table called employee. So in the table, you have all the fields. Okay, in the table, all the fields. Okay. Now what we can do, so for a business user, they don't understand what employee table means. They don't understand. Okay, so now I have another table. Okay, let's assume I have another table, department. So in this table, I have a department ID. Okay, I have D ID. Okay, I have D name. Okay, I have D location. I have D manager. Okay, this is how I have. So now, from a business point of view, it's very hard for them to understand what these are all. As an IT person, you and I can understand, but from a business point of view, it's difficult for them to understand. How do we enable a business user to come and read the data and do things themselves, okay? How do we basically enable this, a business user can come and read this data? So what we can do, we can create a view on top of this, okay? If you are familiar with a view, we can create a view on top of this one. So combine these two no need to have two separate tables, okay? Combine these two. On top of this, you create a view. Okay, so here I'm going to create a view. Okay, this particular view, it's going to basically like, you know, give you back all the fields the way you want to, okay? So combining these two, what I'm going to create, I'm going to create a business-friendly language and definition. So I won't call EID, I'm going to call employee ID. Okay, I'm going to call employee ID. And I'm going to call employee name. Okay, I'm going to call employee ID, employee name. Okay, employee ID, employee name, employee department. Okay, employee department. Okay, <clears throat> employee department. So I can give semantic names. Okay, keep in mind it's not just only semantic names. I'm combining multiple tables. Okay, I'm combining multiple tables. So those are the things I can do here. Okay, so if you notice here. I can combine multiple tables. So here what we are doing, calculation. I can write calculation. Okay, calculations. Okay, combine tables. Okay, combine tables. Okay, combine tables. So I can combine tables. I can calculate these things. So these are the things that you know you can do here. So points what I'm trying to make, if you wanted to, okay? If you wanted to enable business user to come and read the table without going through any complex to understand, what is DID? What is EID? Like that. So I don't want to understand this one. Okay. I just need to use a view where I can get everything. Okay. Employee department. Employee department location. Okay. Employee location. So employee location. So all this information I want. Okay. So what do you call this one? 
this is nothing but the view. Okay, this is the exactly what you were said. Okay, this is nothing but the view. So this Allah is Allah nothing Allah but the view. Okay, this join the conference. Okay, this is nothing but yeah, view. Okay, this is nothing but a view. In this particular view, okay, this particular view is that's not storing data. Okay, so here we are not storing the data. Okay, so here we are not storing the data. No data storage. Okay, no data storage. Okay, that's the semantic layer. No data storage. So what we are taking, understand the backend of this table. Create a semantic layer so that business can use themselves. Okay, so now in this case, it's a business enabled. Okay, so here what happened? It's business enabled. So this become business enabled. Business enabled. So business enabled so that business can be able to use this one. It's a business enabled, business can use this one. Okay, so what we call this one, this is nothing but a universe. Okay, this is nothing but your universe. This is what universe all about. Okay, so I no need to worry about. So here, business no need to worry about. Okay, business users. Okay, business users, no need to worry about. Okay, no need to worry about what is table joint. Okay, table joint, table technical details, table technical details. Okay, okay, table technical details, complex calculation. Okay, complex calculations. So all those things, business no need to worry. Okay, the universe takes care of those. Okay, you can use the universe to create these things. Okay, you can universe to create this one. So points, what I'm trying to make you understand, when it comes to universe, universe is basically like, you know, business enabler. Okay, business enabler actually. So it does all these functions. Okay, it does all these functions. So here, what we need to understand, when you bring your data, okay, so these data can come and store in the multiple formats. Okay. How do we make sure a business user can come and do this function, like, you know, without defining an ID themselves, so they can do this one, like, I mean, they can do this one, they can create a report, analyze the data, whatever they want to do on the data, they can do it. All right, so these are the key functions, what universe does. Again, when you get involved, you will learn more. At this point in time, you just need to understand what exactly the role of universe is. Okay, so here, I'm connecting two tables. In this case, two, two tables, there's no need for a business user to understand what the primary key, what the foreign key, how do we join these two tables? Nothing is told. Okay, if that go to universe, you can like you know, use the information is already available. Okay, all right. So, <clears throat> Mahaman, okay, I have no idea what is your problem is. Okay? So hold on, guys. Okay, I have no idea. Okay, I have no idea. Okay, you are asking me questions in the middle. Okay, you need to check your phone system. Check your Okay, I cannot stop the class in the middle and help you. Okay, I can't stop the class in the middle and help you. Okay, let's deal with later. Okay, I'm sorry about it. That's the best I can do. Okay, I'm in the class. I cannot troubleshoot your phone issue. Let's move on. All right. So we looked at data services, we looked at universe. The next thing what we need to understand, maybe what maybe does. Okay. So the next thing is what maybe does. So the next thing that what we are going to introduce into maybe two. Okay. We understood this, we understood this, now we are going to maybe. All right. So where is maybe come into the picture? So maybe it's primarily for like you know dealing with analyzing data. Okay, what it does? It's basically a self-servicing tool. So basically what it is, a self-servicing tool. So this is a self-servicing tool. Okay, self-servicing tool. Okay, self-servicing tool. What do you mean by self-servicing? No design required. On the fly, you can analyze data. Okay, when it says self-servicing tool, user can create themselves. Okay, users, business users. When it's a users, I'm talking about a business users, can analyze the data by themselves. Can analyze. Okay, can analyze the data by themselves. Okay, by themselves. So they don't need any IT person. Okay, they can do themselves. So this is basically a self-servicing tool. Okay, self-servicing tool. That means a business person can analyze the data by themselves. There's no need for an IT person to do this job. Okay. All right. The next thing what it does, you don't need a design to do this one. On the fly, you can do. Okay. No design required. Okay. That means you don't need to worry about report format, header, and folder. No design required. Okay. No design required. Okay. That means you can create things. Okay. No design required. So that means what? No. Okay. Example. No. Mockups, report mockup required. No, report mockup. Okay, mockup required. Okay, no report mockup required. No header required. Okay, no. Typically, what you see in the report, 
you see a header, the footer, okay, all those things are not required. So things happen on the flight. Okay, things happen on the flight. It's going to basically like you know let you do this one. So if you notice, it's a self-servicing tool. No design required. Okay, when I say required, no design means there's no mock up screen. So typically if you look at a report, what you see, you see a header and footer and like you know bottom and all this is right? So when you take a report, so let's assume it's a cash flow report. Okay, when you say PL report. Okay. So this is the report. If you look at here when you create a PL, what you see at the top is the header information. So here you see header information. So here you see a header information. So this is my header information. This is my header info. All right. So here I get to see the header information. All right. I left the okay. conference. Bottom, I see there's a footer information. At the end, you see a footer information. Okay. And then you have summary and detail. So point is all these things not required. So what is this? This is a report markup. You have a header, you have a footer, then you have summary and detail, all those things. So this is basically your summary information. Okay, so here it's your summary information. It's your summary information. So point is we need to understand this, correct? When I want to create a webinar report, it's just a self servicing tool. Okay. It's the our ad hoc tools. <laughs> okay. So this could be an ad hoc tool. So this is the ad hoc reporting. Okay. On the fly, I want to create a report. I don't have to have a design, correct? Let's say your manager calls you and asking you, hey, tell me the sales in this particular store. Or tell me where is this person is located, correct? So such responses, if you want to give, okay, to a user, there's no need for a design document, you can do. It's one of the most powerful tool in industry, most powerful. I would say every SAP Bob J implementation has this tool, okay? The three tools, whatever we talked about, data services, universe baby, every implementation you go, you get to see this tool. I believe it's one of the most powerful adult analysis tools. So that's what baby does. Okay. The next is what crystal report. How is it? So what is crystal report does? Okay. So again it's an analysis tool. Okay. It's basically called adult analysis tool. Okay. Analysis tool. You can analyze business data. Okay. It's an analysis tool allows you to analyze business information. So when you say allows you to analyze business information, top selling product, okay, top selling product. It is not a report, okay, top selling product. Okay, so okay, best customer, okay, best customer. So this is not a report, correct? So worst product, okay, worst customer or best, okay, so best location to best, uh, best month. Okay, best month of the sales, okay, best month of the sales. So these are all not a report, it's analyzing Insights about a business. Okay. Analyzing insights about a business. I want to understand how my business is doing. Okay. How do we understand how my business is doing? Top selling product. What product is doing well? All right. Who's the customer I need to deal? These are the customer we need to deal. All right. And which month of the sale is doing well? This month of the sales is doing well. So I want to get to know all the business inside. How do we get to business inside? By using tools like maybe. So that's not a report. Okay. This is not a report. So this is basically business insights. Business insights. I want to understand business insights so that I can react much faster. Okay, I can take right decision or I can make better, like you know, prediction. How do I predict my business? All right. The next tool that what we are talking about, crystal. Okay. The next tool that what we are talking about, crystal. So what crystal does? Okay. What crystal does? Crystal in this case, like you know, it's basically letting you to provide the structure information. Okay. So this is not a self-service tool. You cannot use this one. Not a self-service resource. Okay. So this is basically needs a design tool. Okay. Design required. Okay. This requires a design. So this requires a design required. Example: We need to prepare a report markup. Okay. We need to know header information, footer information. Okay. So basically, if you look at your bank statements. Okay. Some of the examples that what we hear is bank statement. Okay. Bank statement. DMB statement. Okay. DMB statement. Okay. IRS statements, IRS statements, okay, IRS statements, IRS statements. So any of those statements, these are all legal statements, okay, these are all legal statements. So these placements have to follow some structure, okay. So there is a structure, you have to follow like, you know, X time, Y dimension, etc. So these are all legal statements. So how do we create such legal statements by using crypto report? So these are all <coughs> legal statements, okay, these are all legal statements. So in order for me to create a legal statement, then I need to use crypto report. Understand here. Here we are not talking about a legal statement, top selling product. Here I'm talking about DME statement. That's when you go to DME, they issue a letter. Okay. So 
that particular reactor, in this case, it's going to be issued by like the by using the crystal report solution, okay? So crystal report letting you to do this kind of like you know structured reporting. What is actually to do a structured reporting? Okay, example create letting you to create a structured report. Create structured report. Okay, create structured report. Okay, this is basically structured report. All right. So this is what we do in crystal report. So crystal report letting you to create a structured report. All right. So understand the difference here. It's getting to the business impact here. Legal governance. Okay, these are all legal statement, governance structure. Okay, legal statement, governance structure. Okay, there is a governance body. Okay, governance structure. Okay, there is a governance structure need to be in place. So this governance structure, if you want to implement through the reporting solution, you have to use crystal reports. Okay, all right. The next one is what? Okay, if we talk about dashboard designer. Okay, next is what? Dashboard designer. So a lot of people in the class talked about it. I'm sure they may know. What that is, right? So basically, what the dashboard designer does, okay, it's basically transformation of raw data into visual form and then analyzing them, predicting them, doing scenario analysis, right? So what will happen if I'm going to lose my job, or what will happen if I'm going to like you know get paid X amount of dollar, right? So how do we predict all those things and how do we analyze this information? So that's basically what it is. It's a visual tool for data transformation. Okay, it's a tool allows you to transform the data into visual form. Okay, so here we are not talking about like you now getting to the business insight. Here we are not talking about like you now creating a structured report. Here we are talking about like you now how do we analyze data in the visual format? Okay, analyze data. Okay, analyze data. Analyze data in the visual format. Then. Visual format, okay, the visual format. So it's not about like you know getting to the business insight. It's not about creating a legal document. How do we analyze data in the in the visual format? Okay, how do we analyze the data in the visual format? So in the visual format, how do we analyze the data? All right, and also doing scenarios. Okay, analyze data as well. Like you know, so what kind of analysis we do? Okay, you can do what is analysis? You can do prediction analysis. Okay, all those things you can do. So here we can do what is analysis. Okay, so I can do what is analysis. Okay, what is analysis? Okay, what is analysis? When I say what is analysis, what will happen if my okay product cost goes up? Okay, so example, what is impact of my PNL when my product cost goes up? Okay, what is the impact? Okay, what is the impact? What is the impact? What is the impact to my PNL? Okay, profit and loss. Or my cash flow, okay. Or my cash flow when my product cost when my product cost goes up when my product cost goes up, okay. So what will happen if I'm going to increase my product cost from X to Y, okay? So how do we analyze this one in the visual form? That's what dashboard is going to do, okay? It allows you to create a dashboard. With the dashboard, we are going to see that right now. I believe Saran is in the class, so he is going to show you the dashboard that he's been building. So you will get to know how do we transform raw data into a visual form and then analyze the data. Okay, raw data into visual form and analyze the data. So this is a different tool than what we looked at the other two tools. Okay, so this also gives the business insight, but it's in a different format. Here I'm not creating legal document. Here I'm not like getting to the business insight. So here I'm more focused into taking the raw data and then using the raw data into visual form and analyzing this one. So it's a watching for analysis. Next is prediction. How do we predict the market condition? Okay. Next is predictive analysis. Okay. Do a predictive analysis. <coughs> okay. Predictive analysis. Next is predictive analysis. So next is I'm going to do predictive analysis. Next is predictive analysis. I'm predicting the market condition. Okay. So how do we predict the market condition? Take a look at the historical data. Okay. And see how the market is like you know, looking for a specific pattern. Okay. So look for patterns. So look for okay, look for patterns. Let like look for specific insight. Okay, look for a specific scenario. Specific okay, look for a specific pattern. So this this kind of things you can do actually. Okay, so point is when you use dashboard, dashboard is not really meant for like getting to like you know such a theory and such a stock fund or responding to a query. So this is also requires like not design. You cannot do this like that. You need to have a design in place. So point is so these are the different tools you learn for a single point. Okay, as I told you, BA Launchpad it's like a portal. It's going to take the next step. So other tool that what we learn is the BA Launchpad. Okay, the other tool is the BA Launchpad. Next one is server actually. BI Launchpad. Okay. 
Okay, BA launch pad is the portal solution. It's the enabler. Okay, it enable a business to access all the solutions. Okay, it's like a portal. It's like a Microsoft portal. Okay, it's like a Microsoft portal where we can access. Okay, where we can access all the information. Okay, it's the information access tool. Access all the information. Access all the information. So all the information that is required, we need to access. How do we access through the launch pad? Okay. Anything you create here, how do we take to the user through Launchpad, right? So as we looked at, <coughs> Launchpad is on top of it, right? So this comes on top of this. So this is basically what we use for Launchpad, right? So the BA Launchpad is basically an interface for the user to come and access all this information. It is the information access media, so it's a rich interactive with information, okay? So that's the BA Launchpad. So BA Launchpad is basically letting the user to come and access all the information that you created, right? So any report you create, how do we take to the user? Okay, who's across the enterprise, that could be done through BA Launchpad. So the BA Launchpad is going to let you do this one, all right? So for BA Launchpad, we can take to the user list. Who's this one? Business user. The business users can come and access this one. One last point, that these are all running. <laughs> that's the enterprise. Okay, that's the server enterprise. So these all have to run somewhere, right? Okay? Like how it is going to run? It's going to run on a server, which is a BA Enterprise server. <clears throat> okay. So users can come and communicate, okay? There are several individual tools. For example, when we go to uh, universe, you have a universe design tool, correct? When you go to like a universe, there's a universe design tool in the world version. In the newer version, it's an information design tool. Like there are individual tools are not going to that level of detail. When you go to specific tools, we can talk about it. At this time, at just a high level, what you need to understand, this is what you can understand. Okay, so you'll be learning these tools. That so you'll be learning these tools, correct? So business users can come and access any of these reports by using the BA Launchpad like a Microsoft portal. The last point what you want to learn is the server. Okay, it's the Bob J server. Bob J Enterprise. Okay, Bob J Enterprise. Okay, so what is the business involved? So this involves controls security. Okay, number one, control security. Controls security. Okay, control security. Then it controls user management. So obviously the security involves user management, right? User management, okay, user management. How do we add more data to user? User management. Okay, controls file management. There's a file. All the files that want to create, that means files, system report file, maybe file, dashboard files, need to manage those files. How do we do? That's a file management. Okay, controls the file management. Controls jobs, okay? Any job that we fail, that manages you. So when I create a system report, or when I create a report report, I want to create a job to run this one. When I load data, I want to create a job. So how do we manage all those things? These are all done through Bob the Enterprise and the server level. Okay? Enterprise on the server level. So all these individual tools can connect to the server, correct? So basically how it is architected. So this is your Bob the Enterprise. This is your Bob the Enterprise. Bob J Enterprise. And this is your Bob J Enterprise. And uh, this runs on top of the repository. It uses either Oracle or SQL Server, whatever you do, that's a repository, correct? So it's a repository. Okay, this is a server repository where we have all the tools, uh, data, metadata is going to be stored. Okay, where all the metadata is going to be stored. So this is basically the actual data storage, metadata information. Keep in mind, not a business definition. These are all metadata storage. Okay, okay. Uh, Okay, <laughs> this is very funny. Okay, read this, read this text. Okay, it's so funny. Read this one. I don't know what his issues are. Read this one. You must stop the class <laughs> course for some minutes. I saw everything, but no why. I told several times, correct? Dialing to my number, which is given, correct? All right, let's move on. Okay, if this is not a problem that I can be, so he used to figure out like, you know, how to dial in this one. Okay, so going back to what I was trying to say. Okay. Yeah, he can watch the recording, that's fine. So um, uh, if he's not able to follow, then he can watch the recording. 
Okay, other option, watch the recording. So he's in Belgium. Uh Sultan, he's in Belgium actually. Like so watch the recording. Yeah, he's not here actually. He's in Belgium, he's attending from Belgium. So I have people from the this class has a people from India, Belgium, and also I believe Singapore. So so Singapore, Belgium, India. So I have people from all over the place plus the US also. So I don't think that we can help anything actually. So I have to Move on, let him call later. He will be the first. That is recording, including voice. Yeah, recording includes live class. Recording includes both audio and video. So, this includes both audio as well as video. That's why I told you no need to take notes. Like, you just follow the class that takes care of everything. Okay? So, there's no need to take a note. So, this includes, this includes both audio and video. Okay, it's a live class. Like a live class. Like a live class, all right. Let's move on. So, we've done enough, uh, we spent enough time there. Actually. Let's move on. Sorry, Mr. Nakamad. So, we have to move on. Let's come back later. Actually. So, now coming to here, actually. So, how do Bobby Enterprise is going to be working? Actually, so this is Bobby Enterprise, the core server where everything runs on here, right? So, this this has like you know, all the things like you know, so whatever we talked about. So, inside you can have security, okay? So, inside we have security. So, this has security, okay? Inside you can have oh, Inside we have security, user management, all those functions, security, user management, okay, user, job, scheduling, okay, etc. All of them is going to be Bobby Enterprise. Now the tool that what we talked about, the front end tools, can connect directly from here. Okay, so these tools. Okay, so these tools. So this is basically your webby. Okay, this is your webby tool. All right. And then you have a crystal. Okay, and then you have a dashboard. Maybe it's not. So this is your crystal. Crystal, and this is dashboard. Okay, this is dashboard. And then the next one. Okay, maybe crystal dashboard. And then you have universe. Okay, you have data services. Okay, universe and data services. Okay, data services. Data services. Has left the conference. And then universe. Okay, universe. So all of them is going to connect here. Okay, this can connect that user. Okay, so this runs on top of this. Okay, so this is basically when you say Bob J landscape, this is how it is. Okay, so when you say Bob J landscape, this is what it is. Okay, all right. So overall, this is what you learn. Okay, so this is what your Bob J landscape looks like. So what we call this one, it's a Bob J like this. You have the card, etc. Based on however many it's going to be. So, what is this landscape called? So, this landscape is the your Bobby Enterprise landscape. So, what we call the whole thing, we call this as a Bobby Enterprise landscape. So, this is what is that one? Bobby Enterprise landscape. Okay, Bobby Enterprise landscape. This is what is that one? Bobby SAP Bobby Enterprise. Okay, Enterprise landscape. Okay, Bobby Enterprise landscape. So when people people say Bobby Enterprise landscape, it's comprised of I'm just putting if there are more into it, but I'm just saying like you know, this is one of them. Okay, this is one of the definitions you could think of. When people say Bobby Enterprise landscape, this is what it is. Okay. So now let's take a look at the system, then I will uh, stop for a minute in the posting. Hey Natovian, do you have uh, a way to I don't know what laptop can use using. So can you show Hana in the studio, then I can take it over? Natovian. Hey, Natovian, are you there? Hey, Natovian. All right. So it looks like either he's on a mute or he's not uh, hearing what I'm saying, actually. Okay. So let me move on to my end. I'll show you all the things in the system. Okay, all the things in the system. All right. Okay, let me move on. Let me move on to this one. Actually, one second. I'm just waiting for him. Whether he's like, you know, there or not. So I am not able to find him. Let me move on to this one. Okay, one second. So I have to switch my laptop. Um, how do I require 64 bit laptop? The one that I'm using is a 32 bit. So I'm going to connect to my different laptop. It's already on actually. So you could see me as um, uh, online. 
just one minute. I'm just going to switch my sound into that one where the noise will be okay. One second. I will show you. These are all in the system. Then we'll take them question. I'll stop that point. One second. It's just coming back. Okay. So let me go ahead and make myself as a separate to my other laptop, and I'll show you. I was hoping that one is going to help me. Is uh, not there. One second. So what we looked at so far is the PowerPoint. Okay, now let's take a look at in the live system and see what we saw. Okay, one second. I found me. I'm making myself as a panelist. Then I'm going to go and then say me as a presenter. Then you'll get to see me. All right. So almost there. Done. So now, what we've seen so Has far. Has joined the conference. These are all. On the PowerPoint. Now, how do we see these in the live system? Okay, so where is the live system here? Okay, so now what you're looking at the HANA in memory studio. Let me start all over again. Okay, let me close this. So, all right, you are in my blank screen. So, you will not only will install this in your laptop. Okay, so he's going to install this in your laptop. So, he's going to work with you. He's going to install these things in your laptop. So, what does this involve? It involves HANA in memory studio. Okay, it involves HANA in memory studio. You can see here, I have Business Object Platform 4.0. I also have HANA in memory studio. When I click HANA in memory studio, it brings back this one. Keep in mind, this requires 64 bit operating system. The operating system has to be 64 bit. If it's not, it's not going to support. So you should have to have 64 bit operating system. So now click on in memory studio. So it's a front end interface where you can access HANA. It's like your SAP GUI. How do I access an SAP application? Through a GUI, okay? like that, if you want to access HANA, you have to have a front end tool. Okay. Now, if you notice, I have two different HANA systems. Okay. So, this is from Natomian DT, Decision Tree Analytics. This is the one he was talking about. This is from my other friend. Okay. One of my friends also has one. So, it's my other friend. So, what you're looking at, two different HANA systems. It's a front end tool like your SAP GUI. For example, how do I access an SAP application? I can run the log on times. You see this one? It's similar to what you're looking at, your SAP log on times, right? So you have multiple systems to choose. I have BW 7.3, I have ECC, same thing here, correct? So you can access multiple HANA systems in a single interface. So the studio is nothing but your SAP GUI. Okay, the studio is nothing but your SAP GUI. It's similar to your SAP GUI, sorry. Hold on a second, where is this? Yeah, so this is what in memory studio here. So here I have two different systems that are connected. Okay, so I connected to this as well as this one. So let me explore this one. So if you see here actually, it basically gives different options for the name. One second, still coming up. Okay, so I can connect. So still trying to connect. So it gives you different users, right? Okay? Like, you know, so what are the users that has been connected to this one? And then click on catalog. So again, you will learn this one. I just wanted to show you what kind of tool that you're going to get involved, right? Okay? So these are the different tools. It can directly connect to BI. It can connect to BPC, wherever you want to connect, ECC, anything it can connect, okay? So Jyoti is my user ID. And these are the different users which has been created to connect to different systems, okay? All right, so when you expand, for example, mine is not fully configured. When you expand this one, you'll get to see columns and procedures and things can use. So keep in mind, it is nothing but a pure database. It's an in memory database. So what you can do with this, you can do a lot more different functions. And you see this one actually, correct? You have different options available. So you can create attribute view, create an analytic. It's like multi provider. It's like a view on top of this one. Okay, you can create procedures, correct? So and also you can monitor the system. See on the top is system monitor, and also you can do administration, and also you can do like you know SQL editor, and also you can do find a table. Okay, find systems. So these are the different functions like you know you can do here. Okay, so it's purely uh, I would say Microsoft SQL Server Enterprise Studio. Or if you're familiar with the Oracle, Oracle SQL Server, Oracle Enterprise Manager type of funding tool where you could manage all the tables related options. Okay. So you can expand any table that you want to see. For example, I have tables in the system. When you expand the tables in the system, you'll get to see what table it has. So based on where it is connected, you can pull all the data. Okay. You can pull all the data. So this is basically Firebase Replicator. Actually, this is installed for Firebase Replicator. So again, 
it's still in a working condition, so not fully integrated, right? So it still works so the this is for replication upload. It goes to ECC, pulls the data, the size of replication is good. So this is connected to BW. Okay, this pulls the BW data. All these are on different mechanisms, okay, and different options where you can connect and pull the data. Okay, with the fiscal calendar here. So this is the table structure, friends. So right click, you will see different options, correct? Like you, know, so you can open a definition, you can generate SQL, see this one, insert statement, select statement, visual SQL, all those functions you can see. So you can select a visual SQL, switch for open the SQL editor, right? So all these options you do, okay? So what this tool is, that is the in memory studio for HANA, in memory studio for HANA. Okay, so it's not just only the SQL side, it, you can also manage this one. See this one, you brought the table, you can visually drag and drop the field to create a SQL. Okay, it's the, the front end tool where you could build all these things, right? You can manage your system, monitor your system, administrate your system, open a SQL editor and open this one, and you can create different views and content, right? So, this way we close this tab, it's go back to the quick launch, right? Here you can get to see this function, right? All right. So over a period of time, you learn this one. This is the HANA in memory studio. How do we connect to HANA? The other tools all here. Okay, all other tools are here, right? So it's a business of the data services. Okay. So data service specific tools. Okay, these are all data service specific tools. And this is on the PA platform, okay? BA 4.0 platform. So this includes all the tools that what we talked about, right? So web intelligence, okay, it's a universe design tool, and it also has a courier web services, information design tool, okay. All the tools, whatever tool that we just discussed actually, okay, it's there. So the crypto report could be installed. So all of those tools, whatever the tools required, it's been installed at Cartier. So this is a tool that we will be using in order to alert this one. But also it connected to BW. You can see this one. I connected this one to BW. So, so BW seven point eight is connected. Okay. So if I want to go to BW, I can go from here to BW. So all in one actually. Okay, this is all in one actually. So this is EPM users zero two three and one second. Uh, I believe it's system. Okay, hold on. So this is connected to BW, okay? So you will have access to all the systems. When you go out and say, I'm a HANA consultant, this is one index we expect to use, okay? You should know how to provide end-to-end -end solution by using all the combination of tools, okay? So given that, what I'm trying to say, learning this area, it is not easy. Let's say if someone thinks it's easy, I have to listen from them. It is not at all easy, it's very tough. So it is very, very tough. But at the same time, I would say it's a rocket science where you cannot figure out. It can be figured out. Okay. How it can be figured out when you focus when you commit when you do hard work. Okay. So that is what the actual key for that is. When you're sitting in the class, it's not going to help. Okay, it's not going to help much. So I always tell my students, I always tell in the class, I have to repeat here too. So watching listening a song different. You can listen a song as you like as much in the top side you want it. But when you want to think a sound, you have to practice. Okay, without practice, there is no way you can stand in the stage and sing a song. Then think that. Whatever I teach in the class, it may appear you are following, it may appear simple to follow, but when you throw it in a real-time situation, when you throw it in the in front of a client or an interview, until unless if you do hands on, there is no way you could optically excel. There is no way you can solve this problem. So all I wanted to make sure you understand the class covers what we discussed in this class. Okay. So in order for you to be very successful, in order for you to be a uh, more uh, practically uh, driven person, you have to do hands on. Without hands on, it's going to be extremely challenging for you to connect all the dots. Okay. You have seen so many tools, so many steps, so many configurations involved. It is not a one single shot, right? So do all of them, we really need to spend like you know, significant time in each of the tools. That's why my courses or our courses take almost four to five months. Okay? Four to five months. So learning a course with like you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks is really not going to help much. Okay. So the way it's been designed, we take a problem. The problem connects all the dots, okay? So why am I doing 
data services. I need data. What data? I need financial analytics data. Or I need smart grid data. I need COPA data. Whatever the damn data, bring them. How do we bring these data services? Where it goes, it goes to HANA. It goes to BW. What next? So business wanted to see this data. They don't want to see the map, which is in three systematic layers. I don't want to create a report. I want to analyze data. Then use this system, right? So point is overall that's how it's structured. That's how it has been connected. Okay. So you need to understand all these things are happened. Okay, through a business problem. So if that business problem understood, if you are able to connect your dots by using the business problem, you'll be the good. Okay, you'll be the good person. So anyway, with that, I'm going to stop you for asking questions. If you have any specific question, please go ahead and post your question and the chat window. I'll respond to you. Okay. So. I just wanted to have the session. The session right now, as I told you, I just wanted to give you an idea of overall what is happening. Okay, any specifics? If you have around logistics, like in you know, a system, the business that you can get in touch with Harry. So he has access to all of us. He will get in touch with all of us. Okay. So if you have any other questions, okay, uh, Ramakrishna, I'm reading your uh, 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 note in memory database. Also, main memory database system. And so, is it a comment or what it is? Like, let, let me go back to my other laptop. Okay, one second. All right. Now back to my other laptop. Okay. So, Ramakrishna, I'm reading your notes. So I'm not sure whether it's a comment or it's like a you know, question. So if you could tell me, then I will respond to in way that everybody understands. So, okay, it's a question. Okay, so very lengthy question. So I may have to take some time to read. All right. So this is basically his question. Hold on a second. All right. Any other question from anybody else? This is his question. So he's asking. All these questions. All right, I got his points. Let me go ahead and post the questions here. So this is his question. Okay, so looks like he's been typing in the beginning of the class. This question. So, what is he asking for? Hana in memory database, also main main memory database system, or an MMDB system, database management system, the primary uh, relies on main memory data structure. Okay, if Hana is a memory database, which means that you know, once you power down, all the data in this memory is gone. So where is the data store? Okay, great question. All right. So uh, the, they also call SAP HANA appliances referred to set of hardware and such software. Okay, all right. Uh, say, uh, for example, ECC also uses HANA and BCC. So then all the architecture looks like how the architecture looks like. So all is going to be simple data. It's simple. So let's, let's answer this one by one. Okay. So his question is, okay, so if HANA is a memory database, which means the data sits in the memory if the machine dies. Okay, so that's why you have to have a special hardware. So you have a failover fail state. Okay, you have a failover fail state. You want machine dies, the other machine take over. Okay, I don't know how much you know about high availability failover fail state. Okay, HANA requires a special infrastructure, correct? So you have failover fail state. Okay, fail over and fail state. Okay, so failover and fail state, these are part of a high availability. Okay, failover, fail, fail. So what does it mean? If this failovers, the other machine will take over. Okay, so it requires a special infrastructure. We can't just like that, like, you know, it's not like, you know, installing Microsoft Office. So it's going to be, this is a response to your first question, okay? It, when it fails, it's going to transfer over the controls here. Number one, if you also wanted to write this on the physical, like, for example, I need to, even though it's on the memory, even though it's going to always available in the memory, but I want to make sure to avoid any disaster. Okay, what you need to do, you can write them in the disk. Okay, so this is the, the, when you say failover, fail, fail state, it, it is shipped the entire memory, correct? It moves the memory here. So it's a, the memory of one machine will go to another machine, correct? So it entire session, user won't get to know any disturbance. Okay, this is part of the high availability. Okay, high availability. So if this were high availability. So during the high availability, the entire memory moves from one machine to another machine. Okay. So Ramakrishna, if you understand this concept of high high availability, that's what they use actually. Okay. Move the memory. Okay. Move the memory. 
okay from one node to another node from node one to node two okay node one to node two so if you have multiple nodes it can move the memory from one node to another node then there is a fail over and fail safe okay right all right you can fail this thing so also even though it's solid state to make sure you need the legal compliances you can store them in a physical disk okay if you can store them also in the physical disk so so that you can bring them back okay so the data if you want to write you can write it to the disk okay so the memory is for only access okay the main memory is mainly for it's like going to physical disk to read the data you can store the memory access the much faster okay so but still if you want to store the data for legal compliance point of view you can store them in the disk for store data okay store the data store the data in the disk okay for compliance okay for compliance or regulatory reason okay so compliance point of view you can store them in the physical disk that's the first response they also called hana applied to refer to set of hardware infrastructure right okay so when you say hardware infrastructure so these machines can right? like now for as i told you there are two like now physical machines we are talking about right so so there is a machine okay so these two machines how do we connect these two machines together so there is a memory card which is going to be used to ship these two data right so these are all physical when you say appliances it's like you no know, it's a totally black box we have no idea how it runs internally okay it's a hardware and also memory and also these kind of devices that's what set up appliances right when you say appliances it's it's like a black box it runs and takes care of itself no need to worry about you about like the hardware is certified you could say so these are all physical card which connect these two machines and also the network card correct right? so this is sitting in a memory it's not a physical disk there is a special instruction to read this one okay it is the network card it's a memory like a move, moving memory so all these are all combination of tools correct right? so it's a node one so you have node one you have node two so how do we connect these two machines okay so these two machines need to be connected so you can use a memory card okay this is your memory card this is your network card so these are all have to be specially designed controlled by sap or some certified by sap so that's what the second question is for so how does the architecture look when it runs on this one i told you already so you can easily you can run on this one somewhere i i put this one so like this right? so these are all going to use the same common data storage no data movement all could use the same one. so different you can create a different schema if you notice i have schema 1 schema 2 schema 3 like that you can create different schema in a single database same as this one there's nothing but different all right any other questions any other questions we have any other questions tool thought okay one second one second so currently is in probatica any data source in probatica is not a in probatica is not a memory appliance correct right? like in probatica is not like no it's a uh, in memory appliance how much time will be spent in logic data how much time uh, will be spent in all data is it a question or what? i don't know what what sort of uh, this one is called okay, our second sorry okay how much time will be spent in bob data services you or me okay is it you or me so you or me i'm not sure what are you asking for um use informatic app not sure what the question is okay not sure what the question is okay okay so we saw all four five tools that the enterprise pack uh, choose these tools all need it depends on the business requirement yeah so we talked about that like so if you if you look at here for example So if I want to bring data, then use the data services. If data already there, then I can create a new one. If you don't need the data, then this tool is won't be the picture. Okay? If you look at like you know, we looked at this one. So if let's say I already have a data. Okay, I don't need to bring any data. The data service will be out of picture. On top of VW, I can create a new one. If business says I don't want all this kind of definition, I I I I really don't worry about definition. I am good with whatever we have. For example. If business don't want this kind of definition, we don't need a new one. We can directly create this one. Okay, so it's all driven by business. Okay, so business, it's not something that like no, it's it's not that your choice. Business has to decide. Based on the business requirement, we have to decide what tool to use. Okay, all right. So that's how I will have a dev quality. Yeah, this entire landscape will have the same thing, correct? Right? 
So we, you have to have the landscape will have to have dev quality production or it's in a, in a separate machine or in a world machine in a multiple instances. We can have this one. Or else, yes. So there is a question over. You will need to have a dev quality kind of a infrastructure or something. Yes. Okay. So the Hana will have a dev quality production system. Yes. You need to have this one. Okay. So basically what it is. So the question is I have a dev. Okay. I have a dev. Okay, from so there I can move on to quality, from so there I can go to production. So that's quality production. Okay, that's to quality, quality to the Okay, so without any words. So how to connect, uh, how, how to connect HANA without any words, okay? So uh, again, you need to understand, why do we need to connect to HANA, okay? So question is, can we connect to HANA without any words? Yes, you can connect to HANA without any words, okay? You can look at here. So do, Data services connect to universe. BW connect to universe. Through BW you can connect, right? So if they want to connect to, okay, so these are all several companies that tools. If you notice the flow, that's how the flow is going. So universe comes on top of BW. In the other case, universe comes on top of HANA, correct? Let's say I don't want to go to HANA directly. I can use BW. Then BW can talk to HANA. On top of BW, I can use universe, correct? So there are so many different options, right? It's not just you have to use universe to connect to HANA. Okay, there are so many different options. All right, any other questions? Okay, if you don't have a question, I'm going to stop here. Okay, I will make sure not only works with you to set up your systems and everything, and then we go from there. Okay, so I'm going to work with Natoya. So he's going to basically get in touch with you, each one of you, to install all the systems and everything. Okay, then we'll do this one. What does the role of Sybase tool play? Sybase is a replicator, real-time replicator, correct? So how do we bring the data? Okay, there's a question around Sybase replicator, correct? So how do we bring data from SAP ECC? Okay, from SAP ECC into HANA. How do we bring this data? Okay, this is your SAP HANA. So how do we bring the data? So they use Sybase replicator for real time. If you want to bring the data from real time, so this is Sybase replicator. Okay, Sybase replication. Sybase replication agent. Okay, so that brings the data real time. Okay, that brings the data real time. All right, can we use a laptop speaker? You should be able to use it. In case if it's not, I am enabling. You need to get in touch with that batch. Okay, check with your batch. Yes, if not, check with your batch. Okay, check with your batch. All right, check with your batch. All right, so if data service is used for non SAP sources. All right, there's another question. Uh, data is used only for non SAP sources. But another question is data is for non SAP sources. Okay, for HANA, for SAP HANA, yes. Okay, SAP HANA, yes. But data services can also be used. Okay, can also be used for SAP tools, SAP ECC and other tools, okay, other tools, okay, it is not a limitation. We didn't install this ETL, then why data services? It's going to go away, okay, SAP BW, ETL is going to go away, it's going to go away, I hope so. So data services has more, more functions, has more user-friendly functions, user-friendly functions than BW, okay, it has more functions than BW, that's why. Okay, will you be explaining business object explorer in this course? I don't have business object explorer, right? Okay? So Rakesh, so Rakesh is there? No, I don't have the tools. We don't have the tools. We don't have the tools. Okay, whatever I told, that's all I do. Okay, whatever I do, that's all I do. I don't have any of those tools, explorer. Okay, we can talk about it, but I don't have the tools to explain more. All right, any other questions? Okay, if you don't have a question, Thanks for joining at this text. I will make sure Natalie is getting in touch with you. So he's going to work with you to install all the systems and everything, and we will take it from that point. Thank you very much for joining. If you have any further questions, so call me. Okay. Okay. One question from our friend Sandos Gauda. Any references around the uh, internet product we play at Okay. We can talk about the next class. We can talk in the next class. Okay. We can talk in the next class. Bring this up. Okay, in the next class. Okay. You can talk about the next class.
all right so thank you very much take care bye